Okay, so I've started for recording. Um, we're focusing on on session three today. Um, and basically session three is on study unit three. So so we'll look at the descriptive statistics and basically uh, we will do numerical measurements. Um, so what I also want to to show you today is sometimes when when I would use Excel, so I've done something here that that we will work through Excel as well to sometimes make it easier easier for you to calculate some of the the answers as well. And I'll I'll share the, the spreadsheet with you um, after the session in the in the chat. In any case, when then you can use it and just change numbers as as you need to for for the exam or for some of our other assignments. Okay, so basically, when we get to numerical measurements, and and let me first go to to some of the summaries. So so basically, we are looking at at a few things in. Inverse. So, so we will look at measures of of central location. So that is basically when we look at the mean, median, and mode, and we'll do one or two two exercises on that. Then the next part is basically looking at the measures of dispersion. So basically, what that means is how is the, the variables or the numbers um, nearly dispersed around the mean, median, and mode? Um, so, so the things that will come into play with that is something like the range, um, variance, standard deviation. We'll look at quartiles and then also into quartile range, but but we'll get there. So that is nearly looking at the things around the mean. Um, and then the last part is looking at relationships between between two numerical variables. This will also nearly be part of your last study unit. Um, when we look at, at regression, that is also normally when you look at two, two variables and what what's the correlation so um, we'll look a bit on it to, today but basically in study unit 11 there will be much more focus on that as well so in the relationship one we normally look at coefficient of correlation the r um, and then also we can look at coefficient of determination that will be your r square and your coefficient of variation. Um, and that is basically looking at, at the measurement that you take the, the standard deviation and you divide um, the mean by that. Um, but, but we'll get there. OK, so that's basically the things that, that we will cover in, in this study unit. But just nearly looking at, again, five, six, seven examples and then nearly around those examples what you can expect in the exam. OK, before we we start off with question one, any any questions you can also as we go along. Put questions in the chat. I can see it. You can put up your hand. I can see most of the. Of the hands as well, otherwise. You just in interrupt me as well, please. OK, so are you guys comfortable that we can just continue with the first one? OK, anybody else also struggling to hear me? No issues of sound on my side. OK, so hopefully the recording will also be better. Um, Christine, that you can listen to that as well. It can be it not 
nice weather in Cape Town at the moment. So it can be that there's some issues with that as well. Um, but hopefully the recording will also be better. Okay, yes. There is a... Sorry, John, yeah, I put my hand up. I just want to say that if, if people are struggling with the sound, it's actually just the function I've got to disable on the either the PC or the phone to put on speaker and not on the headphones. It'll okay. change the volume drastically. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm also still learning all of this stuff, <laughs> even though it's been a year, but yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so so the first one that, that we that we're looking at is when distributions are symmetrical, not symmetrical. So what I always want to do, and this I just want to just check why. Nah, cool. Um, I always draw a, a diagram for me or so when we look at something being symmetrical, we we look at the, the bell shape. So when we look at the bell shape, there's this line in the middle. So if it's symmetrical, the, the mean, median, and the mode must be equal to one another. So in the middle, the mean, median, and mode must be equal to, to one another. Then it will be symmetrical. The other things that that is also interesting, and we'll get to that nearly in study unit six, when we start looking at the, the normal distribution functions and those kind of things. But but just for you to remember that as well. So when something is symmetrical, it basically means that that mean, median, and mode cuts the bell shape curve into two. And those two are equal parts then. The other thing that we'll get to when we get to probability is that everything under that bell-shaped curve, the probability adds up to one. So I think that is just the other thing that we're not doing it yet in, in this one, but just that, that you know everything under that bell-shaped curve as a probability will add up to one. But that is study unit six and seven and eight. Um, but but nearly just want to show why these early study units are also important for later on. So when we look at the first question, distribution is symmetrical. The value of the mean, median, and mode um, are equal. So that is actually an easy one because that is correct. So let's just look at the other options and see what it should have been. Um, we use the sample to conclude about population. Okay, that has nothing to do with if a distribution is symmetrical or not. So it's not that one. Each observation in a sample is likely to be selected. Also not anything to do with symmetrical. Um, the value of mean, median, and mode is not equal. Okay, so that is definitely not correct because they need to be equal. We are able to calculate the mean and the standard deviation through the calculator. <laughs> yes, but that has nothing to do with um, if it's symmetrical or not. So even if it's not symmetrical, you will be able to calculate the mean and the standard deviation through a calculator. Okay, so, so basically those four are wrong, but some of them actually have nothing to do with if a distribution is, is symmetrical or not. So the important thing about symmetrical is that the mean, median, and mode will always be equal. Okay, so so let's go into the next one that is more to do with numbers. So what I've also done, I have nearly done this. We're gonna show. I'm gonna show it for you in Excel as well. 
just that you have another option. Um, so first we do it the, the old fashioned way nearly. So when we have a set, a data set, we first need to need to arrange it from from smallest to biggest. You can arrange it from biggest to smallest as well. But if you need to work out the Q1 and Q3, we need to draw from small from the smallest number to the biggest number. So what I normally do is I would write it um, down and that's that's I think the in a in a sense what's making your assignments and your exam much more difficult is because everything is online. Um, we typically one would work this out on on paper. Um, now you still need to waste a bit of time to write it on paper as well. So, um, but let's get into it. So smallest first, then second smallest, then 28. Let's quickly see, then 50. And then there's a 51 and a 51. Okay. So to get the range, basically the biggest minus the smallest. So it will be 51 minus 26, which is 5. Okay. We needed to get the, the correct one. So that actually would have been the correct one. But let's find out what is the median. So the median is the middle number. So we've got six numbers. So the middle number will be between 28 and 29. So the way we can do this is also to say, well, it's between 28 and 29. So it will be 28 plus 50. Sorry, <laughs> between 28 and 50. Um, so that number will be 29. So if we needed to work out the, the median, it would have been 29. The mode is the one that happens the most. So the mode will be 51. Sample mean, so, and let's start using some of the, the symbols as well. Sample mean will be the sum of all your x's divided by the number of in the sample. So let me just see if I have my, my calculator. So it will be 26 plus 27 plus 28 plus 50 plus 51 plus 51. So I get it as 173. And if we divide that by 6, we get 28.83. Okay, so that's why that one is also wrong. It should be 28.83. Distribution is symmetrical. Okay, so we know it will only be symmetrical when mean, median, and mode are exactly the same. Here we know mean, median, and mode are not the same, so it is not symmetrical. Okay, so that is why that one will also be wrong. Okay, so nearly out of that first question that, that we've seen where mean, median, and mode will be equal when it's symmetrical, here now if I ask us 
if it's symmetrical or not. To be symmetrical it needs to be the same, and in this instance it is not because your your mean is closer to 29. Okay, your median is also close to or is 29, so that is actually very close, but it's not the same. And your your mode is 31, so definitely not symmetrical. Okay, so this in a sense is is sometimes easier because you only need to work out the the mean. Um, but if I ask you now to work out the standard deviation or the variance, now it becomes tricky because there's now lots of, of work that you need to do. So remember some of these numbers um, because now I quickly want to show it to you in, in Excel. Um, so I haven't, and let's just, Okay, can you guys still see this? Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so also when I send it to you, you will see that I've just created a big, a big area here where you can put in numbers. So, so as we do the formulas, I'll just highlight everything. So when you need to practice and there's more numbers, you just add more numbers. And the, the, the um, formula in the back will in any case then take it into account. So let's put in the numbers, 51, 27, 26, 30, 28 and 51. Okay, so the mean is just the average. So there's the average function. So let's do that. Okay, so the mean, and if you remember, that was the mean that, that we also worked out. Okay, so the mean I at least know is correct. Let's look at median. I hope there is a median function. Yes, there is. Let's put it in. Let's see if we actually. And yes, okay. So remember, the median was also 29. Okay, so let's see if it can actually do the mode as well. Oh, it tells me that the mode. Okay, so let's go for it and see if that works. It's supposed to be 51. Okay, so mean, median, and mode, actually we could have worked out with Excel. Okay, so let's, if I go back to that presentation, so if we needed to work out Q1, Q2, Q3. Then again, we needed to, to use formulas. So let's quickly see if there is not a, a formula for quartile returns. For, so let me just check what is that. Okay, so let's see if, if this will work. So what I'm going to first do, so I should have. Okay, let's do this first quarter. Okay. So if I go back to this, if that is. So Q1 would have been n plus 1 divided by 4. That would have been 6 plus 1, so 
7 divided by 4. So it would have been at position 1 and 3 quarters. So it would have been between those two numbers. Okay, so it is. Um, so your quarter 2 is supposed to be exactly the same as your median. So let's just check if that is the same answer. So it is supposed to give you 29, it does. Okay, so basically what you can use this now for is all your questions with quartiles um, because it will then automatically give you that. And Q3, if you look at, it must be between 51 and 51. So the only number between those two are 51. So it is definitely 51. Okay, so then what I thought is, okay, so let's, if you needed to, we needed to work out the range. So that would have been the minimum value. And the maximum value, I already nearly entered uh, the difference. And there we have actually worked out the difference as well. So the last one that I just want to show you is, is the variance because, again, if we now needed to work out the variance, it would have, let me nearly show you what we needed to do if we needed to work out the variance. I just want to take out some of the... the numbers because we basically want to work with that number because that's the mean. So if if I wanted to to work out the variance, the variance formula is the sum of my x minus the the mean value. I needed to square that, and then I think I need to divide by n. So let's just check. Yes. Okay. And you guys don't need to remember the formulas because it's open book. I'll also create for you a formula page that you can, that I'll send way in advance that you can also check. So please don't remember any of the formulas. I will um, create you a formula page that that formula will be on there and it will tell you this is variance. Um, the same with mean, the same when we go into all the other study units as well. So don't don't worry about that. I'll, I'll create you a, a formula page that, that I'll send you away in advance with, with some uh, measure or some writing on it as well. What what to use it for. Okay, but now to work out the variance for this, we needed to say 51 minus that, the square root, um, plus 27 minus that, the square root, plus 26 minus that square root. So nearly, what is it, six um, equi or six calculations that we needed to make then we needed to add everything together, then we needed to, to divide. And very easily one can make a difference, uh, a, 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 a mistake when, when you do this. Um, so again, please, if you want to use the, the Excel spreadsheet, you can do that. Um, so, 
we've worked out the variance and then what I added was for us to work out the standard deviation is basically the square root of the variance. Um, so these two formulas basically then look at your variance. Um, so it's a built in in calculator from from Excel. The standard deviation I just said well this the square root of the variance. But let's look if it is actually a standard deviation function. So standard deviation for sample, there is actually one. So that's just again a test to see if that was the same. Okay. And it is. So again, you can decide which one to use, but whenever you now change these numbers, it will change on on your sheet as well. Um, so I will definitely send this to you that you can you can work with that for other examples and for your exam actually as well if you get a, a variance or standard deviation question. OK, so I'll definitely send this to you guys. I'll also upload it up to the team's site, but I'll put it on the WhatsApp group as well. OK, so let's first pause here and quickly get a check in on this. How do you? Is this a bit? Is it making it a bit simpler for you as well? Um, taking away some of those calculations and things like that. Cool, OK, so we'll we'll get to now one of the, the other questions that I think have it in. Um, so so we'll get to that. OK, so so basically just one more question on central tendency or location. So measures of this include and what I normally like to do is I'll just um, mark it off and then one one knows nearly what what the right answer is. So mean, median, mode when they have all the same value. Okay, see, so that is actually not needed because when you are back at um, the first question where it's symmetrical, um, so not all measures of tendency will be that mean, median, and mode is equal. It's only when it's symmetrical. So I'm putting a question mark on that one if that is actually true. The presence of an outlier, we actually don't care about outliers when we're looking at location, whether the distribution is symmetrical or skewed. OK, so that's. Again, not really what we are after. Sample size, mean, variance. Um, so definitely mean, but that is dispersion and this is not in it, so it's not that one, mean, median and mode. OK, so basically it is option five. And again, very easy to make a mistake in the first one because you see mean, median and mode and as for brain, for exam time as well, you nearly know it's mean, median, and mode, and then you select the first option um, without realizing that there's actually the right option is the last one, just because there was something added that, that didn't uh, make it correct. Um, so the first question that I showed you, and this one straightforward nearly, but it is around the, the theory of of this chapter. And again, it is they, they like to, to nearly confuse you because in the exam, I would probably, I would have just seen that and it's like, yes, I've got the right answer. Okay. So let's go to the next one. So here, 
it is, I think, the same. It's nearly the same values. Um, so I am going to let me first. Since. I have all of this in here, let's create a copy. Let's copy that one in because we OK, we don't need to. I just want to check. OK, so we OK, so not to worry, we're not going to do anything with this one in Excel. We can do do most of it here. So let's look at. Correct option. OK, so you would also see. This probably came out of previous exam papers as well, because you can look at how close that question and this question is. So again, looking at six numbers, year was 127, 251s. In this one, there's 227s and 151. The other numbers are exactly the same. Um, so again, this will happen in you would see it in the assignment when you add that in and you do a second attempt or third attempt that the only thing that would nearly change is some of the numbers and then some of the answers, but they're not going to radically change the, the question types. So in your exams as well, there is normally three or four different exam papers. Um, with the questions nearly being randomized for each student. So again, it's not that the, the questions will be different. It is the, the values in the question that will be different. So it's not that you need to worry that somebody else is getting a, a easier paper. The, the paper will be exactly the same, the types of questions, but the numbers will be different. OK, so let's look at this one. So and I think this was also on the, the chat where, where we talked about this one, where there was a mistake, I think, in one of the calculations. OK, so if we didn't sort this from big to small, one can easily make the mistake to say first value last value, we subtract, the range is zero. Very easy to do that. Um, so this I just wanted to show again, important we need to arrange or sh sort it from smallest to biggest. OK, so if if you didn't sort it easily, you could have made the mistake by saying, well, 27 minus 27, that's zero. That's the first one. Um, let's go to the next question. OK, but it's not. So question one is wrong. The range is again 51 minus the 26, which is five. OK, so now we look at. Um, the median, so the median. Will lie between 27 and 28, so the median is definitely not 29. It will be 27.5 because that is halfway between 27 and 28. OK, the mean. The sum of that divided by six, so it will be 26 plus 27 plus 27 plus 28 plus 30 plus 51 gives us 169. And if we divide that by six, we get 28 comma one six and that continues. So 
And I think this was the mistake in the the, the book as well, the extra study guide. Um, so the mean is wrong. In the study guide, I think they said divided by five. Um, so just be when we you go through that again, it should be divided by six. Mode 27, number happening the most? Yes, correct. Okay, so the mode is correct. Unordered data, that was for unordered data. This is ordered data from smallest to biggest. So this is, if I said order data, it would have been correct. Unordered data, incorrect, okay. So with unordered data, this is the wrong one because that is already ordered. Okay, so very similar to, to the previous question. Um, just again, really wanted to show some of the easy mistakes one can make when you're under pressure in the exam. Um, and that's why there's, with a reason why they selected the range is zero and not some other random number because very easy to make that mistake of saying the one minus the other one and you get zero. Okay, so that is again looking at mean, median and mode most of the time and trying to figure out which ones are correct and which ones are wrong. Okay, so let's look to the next one and again a theory so you'll see that that I do throw in the theory, theory questions as well because I think you've seen it in in the first assignment as well there's there's some theory questions that's not always makes sense um, why they ask that but I think that is just it has always been in the, the question set um, so so they will ask it Okay, so you have a talk about the mean. So let's see the mean, the middle score, if you line the score up from lowest to highest. No, so that is something else. What do we call that one? Okay, hey, anybody? The middle score, if you line the score up from lowest to me to highest? It's the median. It's the median. Awesome. That's the median. Median. I say. Okay, so it's not that one. The central tendency of a distribution? Shoo. It can be. can be because central tendency that is mean, median and mode. The most frequent score in the distribution? No, so what is that? The mode. Cool, that's the mode. One high point that you are sure about. One high point that you, okay, I assume that will be an outlier that they refer to, one high point. Not, I don't know what that means, but it's definitely not mean. About how spread out the scores are. Okay, it's also not because that is dispersion that we're talking about. Okay, so the the one that then is the, the correct one is option two. Okay. So, and this is nearly, if you look at study unit three, the, the basics of that and nearly what the most difficult, if we now include, include the next, next question on on the range and Q1 and Q3 and, and those things as well. Okay, again, Q1, Q2 and intercortal range. Okay, so we'll do these two. So let me put it in Excel. So 
so that I can show you just what and let's make it when we can actually see all the options. OK, and I you will see as I type in the numbers, all the formulas actually changes. Or all the answers changes. Okay, so let's just quickly 26. I just want to make sure 28, 20, 21, 22, 25, 18, 23, 15, 50. Okay, so interesting, you will see that now. So what that means is that there is no mode. So if you run through the data, you will see that there is no number that actually appears twice. So there is no mode. Um, but the question is not about mode, so that one can understand now. So let's let's quickly check what can we have answered um, from this. So the value of Q2, okay, so you needed to get also the incorrect one. Okay, so the value of Q2 is not equal is not always equal to the median. Okay, so that's the incorrect one. Okay, so we actually didn't need to work out anything. Um, the position of Q1, we can do that now. So let me add in here for you a position because position of will be so you count how many numbers there are what is it divided by four okay that's quite interesting so i must just remember the right formula okay so you count your numbers count okay so you count your numbers so it was n and your formula is n plus one divided by four so you count your numbers so it's n plus one divided by four so the position is 0 0.75 so option one was correct so let's do that i'll just change it now so for q2 it is two times that formula divided by four let me just check where it was that mistake there's one and then for Q3, it will be three times. Count plus one. I'm going to check if I'm making a mistake somewhere. Okay, so that's quite interesting. Can that be if that, that formula is wrong? Ah, okay. So while I did that, that moved down. While I did that, that moved down. Okay. Okay, so now you can use this as well to, to work out the position for your Q1 and Q3. So position Q1 should be 2.75, so that one is correct. Position for Q3 is 8.25, that one is correct. To calculate the value of Q3, ranked first the value from smallest to largest, correct. The interquartile range 
is six. Okay, so that now is going to be interesting because this works um, it out so as as seven. But this is now the it doesn't round it off like in your book where so in your and that's the difference now between all the textbooks as well and the study guide so if we had to round off i just want to add that so we would have had okay so we need to add something more in here so that was your Okay, so that was your, so if it was rounded off, it would have been 20. And if it was rounded off, it would have been eight, which was 26. So the rounded off would have been the 28 minus 20, which was your interquartal range. So now again, that's why there's always differences in, in some of the interquartile inter range, if you look at um, the, the study guide and the textbook and now Excel as well, because Excel uses the pure mathematical way where we are taught in the study guide that you need to round it off. Okay, so I'll check how we can nearly change this that it looks at at the rounded off numbers i'll just check a bit because that can have a difference in in your answers and you would have seen also if you look at the different ways of doing it um, sometimes there will be differences in your interquartile range um, so i think this is a, a good one that i'll just check how I can do that for you guys. OK, but basically out of this, we looked at Q1, Q3, um, interquartile range. Um, so again, quite important. But again, Excel can work out the, the position for you. So again, if you just had the position with the ranking, you can automatically also pinpoint where where it is sitting, um, specifically when you have a bigger um, amount of numbers as well. OK, so let's so uh, here the one that was wrong was option two. And here you actually didn't need to work out anything because that was quite straightforward. OK, so let's look at the last Last question. Um, so again, we can use Excel. We can use the nearly the old method. So let's let's look at the old method of ranking it from smallest to highest. Because then I'll also show you how I normally then look at it if it's done like that. So 33, let's just check. 37, then we have 41, 43, just shout if you see me missing a number. Okay, so let's see what, when it's 44, Forty-seven, fifty, fifty-one, 
55 and 61. Okay, cool. Okay, so sitting with 10, so 10 plus 1 will be the divided by 4. We'll use that and then it's just depending on if it's quarter 1, there's a 1. If it's quarter 3, there's a 3 in front. Okay, so and then because it's 10, you will have that the middle number will be that, so that is at 5.5. .5. So let's first get to 5.5. .5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5.5 .5 is between those two. So for me, the easiest, 44 plus 47 divided by 2 will give me that number. It's 44 plus 47, so it's 91 divided by 2, gives me 45.5. Okay, so that's your median or your Q2. Okay, so let's quickly see. Correct. Ah, I'm looking for the incorrect one. Okay. So, let's look at Q1. So, let's first work out the position. So, it is 11 divided by 4. 11 divided by 4 is 2.75. Okay, so 2.75, is it correct? Or incorrect? Okay, so we're looking for position by talking value. So the position is 2.75, but the value is going to sit between those two. So that one is wrong. Okay, so again, very simple to make the mistake because you look at Q1, you work out the position, you see 2.75, I see 2.75 and nearly automatically I want to say it is correct, but we're not looking for position, we're looking for a value. Okay, so then let's get the position for Q3. So 11 times 3 divided by 4 will give you the 8.25. Okay, so the position is correct. Still looking for the incorrect one, so we know that one was incorrect. Um, then we use the round off method. So 8.25 to round it off, round off to 8. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So your value is going to be 51, correct. So let's look at, to get to the intercall to our range, we also should have worked out Q1. So Q1 was 2.75. Again, we work with rounded off. So it's value of three, one, two, three. So 51 minus 41 will give us our interquartile range. Interquartile range, sorry. And that is 10. So that, just want to show you how you got that as well. Okay. But very easy to make the mistake. And, and you will see a lot in your assignment as well, how they nearly use the position and the value 
um, nearly in the wrong ways. So this might be a very good example of the exam question where they like to throw in the position and the value and um, make one of them wrong or one of them correct, depending on what how they want to phrase it. Um, and again, you will see that the one that one can easily make a mistake with will be the first choice. They won't put it at the at the end because you normally start at the first option. Um, so you will see that in most of, of uh, assignments as well, that sometimes the first one is the one that you might choose wrongly um, just because that's the easiest one to pick always. OK, so that is the end of, of study unit three. So let's quickly have just a check in with you guys. Was this? Um, does this make my understanding a bit better for for study unit three? Is there anything missing? Is there anything that we need to add? That we need to look at? Yes. Uh, John, it might be a stupid question, but I just want to know why did you divide uh, quartile one by four, quartile three by four, but quartile two by two? Okay. <laughs> I might have lost that somewhere. No, no, shortcut. I did a shortcut. Okay. Uh, so it would have been right for me to do it this way. So quartile one is one, quartile two is two, quartile three is three. But two divided by four is two. So I just mm -hmm. did it shortcut. But good question because when I wrote it, I was I was thinking I'm um, now going to confuse because I'm yeah, using that, different. Yeah, me a bit off, uh, but yeah, it makes complete sense. Okay, so but but I think the easiest one to remember is nearly whichever quartile you're looking at is the one that's in front of the brackets. Mm. Okay. Cool. Other questions? Anybody else have a question? Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording, but then I'll just quickly